No decision is the most common reason we lose deals as sellers. They come in the form of getting ghosted, timelines being pushed out with each follow-up, and then getting told your contact didn't get the budget. Stick around because we're gonna fix all that. Hi, I'm Victor, a full cycle account executive turned sales manager with over 10 years of B2B sales experience. And on this channel, I cover topics from prospecting to closing and everything in between. On today's episode, I'm joined by Jasim Tazi, head of sales at Ubiqui, and we're talking about micro demos, what they are and how we've used them to boost our own win rates so you can too. I hope you'll enjoy this session as much as I enjoyed recording it. Let's do this. Hi, Jasim. It's a pleasure having you here. Could you sh uh, do a short introduction for the audience so they also know who you are and what you do? Hey, Victor. Oh, thank you so much for having me uh, on the show. It's a, it's a pleasure. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm Jasim. I'm the head of sales at Ubiqui. We're an AI solution that basically help companies boost the engagement rate uh, by automating the creation of uh, hyper-personalized videos. So yeah, what we do in two words is that we can clone the voice and face of people and uh, implement uh, this in a video of themselves to yeah address their client by their name and pain and everything. But yeah, that's but background wise, I used to work for a company before. It's a B two B SaaS company named Anchor Store, a super fast growing startup. That uh, yeah, and uh, and I arrived. I was one of the first employees there, uh, and I ended up being sales manager. And uh, we were working on the acquisition of new brands in the Benelux. So that's it. Amazing journey, and and that plus the reason that that you're working on Ubiqui is is uh, the main reason I wanted to to have you on this interview. Um, just for the audience. So what what we're going to be talking about today is is uh, closing more deals and specifically uh, the challenges that come with it. What we all are facing, especially today, is uh, we're getting ghosted after the first call or when we're doing outbound uh, and generic follow-ups aren't cutting it anymore. It's not something that buyers respond well to. They want a buyer-free experience. However, buyers who can engage uh, by, or sales reps who can engage buyers are still doing very well. Um, these are one part of the topic, the pre-sales uh, and uh, deal management. The second half is once you've closed the deal, you want to create uh, feature adoption and upsell opportunities for which you need to handhold buyers to adopt more and more of your product. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And of course, there's many ways of going about it. But the topic that we're specifically going to be talking about is how video messages throughout the sales cycle help you increase uh, buyer, and buyer engagement and uh, feature adoption. So that's the topic we're going to be talking about. But for those who aren't using video messages in their uh, in their sales cycle today, Yasim, can you explain to those people why should we consider using video messages at all? Is it just hype or is there really a good meaning to this? <laughs> uh, Victor, you're teasing me, huh? <laughs> I no, try. Yeah. No, but seriously, I, I, it's a great question. I think that uh, there is definitely an interest in video and the main question is how do I turn my video which is a nice to have to an informative must have that's the main question here so if you're sending a video where you're basically just uh, engaging and showing the effort and, and the reason why the person will answer you is because they will feel like okay uh, they've done a video for me I'll have to answer them and you break through the noise which is already really cool uh, can be turned in like a must-have if you start showing your screen and maybe demoing some features of uh, of what you have in your uh, of, of your of your tool, or just like showing some if you have a complex uh, process that you need to show. It's also a great way to do this. So, um, in my previous job at Anchor Store, we were blitz scaling, so that means that we needed to have a very, very fast acquisition. And most of our users actually were very s small deals. And uh, so s let's say less than yeah 5K a year. And you don't want to spend too much time on a deal that brings yeah. so little. And most of our revenue stream was based on them adopting our tool and using it more and more. How do you make sure, how do you automate the relationship with these guys 
without uh, without sacrificing for human touch. A video is a great way to do this. So sending videos to your SMBs, explaining them, demoing them, how you can do things on the platform to have them have a better understanding of what you're offering and increasing your ARR with them is just an awesome way. So that's why, to, to me, mm -hmm. uh, are there just hype? There is a lot of hype around videos. I received more and more of them. Uh, but I think that to turn your video from a nice to have to a must have, you need to show it to screen share. Uh huh. Right. Uh, and I, I think what's interesting is based on what you said, it, you're saying that not all videos work. So you can't just record a video and expect it to work. Uh, I'm assuming that there are some, some best practices that go along with it off the top of your head in, in your experience, uh, can you share some do's and don'ts when, when someone's getting started with video messages? That's yeah, of course. Um, well, we, yeah, we start to receive more videos. I think everybody here start to receive like sales videos and, uh, and there are some huge red flags and we start to have, I mean, at Ubiq, we we're lucky enough to have some relevant data because our users have been sending thousands of personalized videos by now, and we can see with a lot of precision what works and what doesn't. So for example, we see that any video that is above three minutes has less than 5% completion rate. And I'm saying five to not wow. say like personally, I think it's almost zero, but yeah. Uh, so think about being short, being concise and keeping momentum. And don't, so the first few seconds of your video are the most important. You don't want to start your video by introducing yourself. If they have reached you and watching, like the point where they're watching your video, they already know who you are and what you're doing. So don't start your That's video a with a, point. hey, first name, I'm Jasim from Ubiqui, we're a startup that does this. And you just lost seven seconds, seven precious seconds right. of my attention, and I'm usually not continuing it. So jump right in. You have to start by telling them why you're reaching out. So first, know your audience, why you're reaching out, and explain, explain them exactly what they're going to watch in your video. So if your video is 45 seconds, I want to know what I'm going to look at. So you're telling them, hey, I see that you're a head of sales. I had, as a head of sales, I guess you're experiencing pain. Our tool can help you do this. And in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to show you how I do it actually on my tool. Yeah, so, so you know the person's job to be done and, um, and uh, then you're positioning yourself as the expert who has been there, seen that, done that, and knows how they can overcome it because you've helped others like them in the past. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That's uh, that's exactly it. So you need to know the pains of your of the people you're reaching out to, and I think that's. I mean, it's a bit the same rules as emailing, but yeah, in a video, mm -hmm. and it's harder because you have to record it yourself, and you can add emotions in there, and and like, it just it's like adding a new dimension to your message. If email is two D, videos is three D. Yeah. Can't just read a script, right? It doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. You have to you have to live your script, man. <laughs> And, uh, and and to me, like something that is super impactful is if you know your your uh, your viewer. When I said viewer, the, your prospect basically has yeah. something that takes five minutes of their day every day. Every time they do this task, it takes them five minutes, and you can show them how you do it in in thirty seconds. That's that's what you want to show them in your video. So you just you just tell them you you put you pinpoint. And once you've done this, you just show them in 30 seconds or a minute, or sometimes, I mean, it's not even possible for them to do it because it takes, it would take so long. Like, how do you generate an invoice on your tool? How do you, how much your, how your dashboard is so much better? How your, you, you know, the drill. And, and to yeah. me, always demo um, uh, processes over features. You want to show you want to show a process. You want to show how you go from the pain to the solution. You don't want to just say, here's a dashboard and it looks nice. You know, you want to show <laughs> how you create yeah. it, how easy it is. And and that brings me to the last to me one of the last points, but I don't want to take too much time on this, but uh, because I could keep talking about it for hours. I bet. Uh, Sounds like it. It's uh it's you don't pitch the same to an IC and to a leader. I see hmm. individual contributor. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 don't use jargons. I'm against jargons. So if I, if I do it, just, just like that, please. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, when you're when you're uh, when you're showing something to an IC, uh, to to someone who is operational, to uh, to an AE, to an SDR, you want to show them how your tool is used on a daily basis, like how their life is going to be changed and and why they should do the change to your tool. When you're pitching to a manager or to a leader, what you want to show is is how palatable how easy uh, it is for them to to check the performance how is how how easy it is also for them to implement or maybe the tool adoption that you have with mm. with other teams these are the factors you want to advertise in your video for for a, right. a leader not love the the use of the tool yeah love that love how you called that out especially during uh, during a crisis the last thing uh people want is to buy shelfware like tooling costs have already been cut when you're selling tools today uh you need a way to show that this is going to have high adoption it's not just going to be uh, put aside it's easy to use people actually want to use it and uh, and it's not just marginal impacts that you're going to get but it's way bigger than that i love how you called that out um and what are some like no-brainer mistakes that you know, just avoid like what are the 20 percent of mistakes that if you avoid you're already like 80 percent ahead yeah, we we covered a few, uh, I think. So the thing that don't introduce yourself um, and everything. Right. And, uh, but if if I had to add a few, yeah, just short under under. Don't, don't turn your video into a feature dump. You don't want to show them more than one two feature maximum because otherwise it means that you don't know where you're reaching out. You know, uh, I, I want to see one feature. I want to understand it and. Most of the time, the reason why people ghost you or or just like don't don't answer your 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 follow ups is because they might not understand exactly what you're talking about in a few in a few lines. It's hard to to take a pain or take a feature and really word it in a way that is understandable. Same goes for a mm. video. So yeah, try to like cut down the edge, leave the diamond in the middle, and just like talk about this nothing else T so tell them you're going to tell them tell them and then tell them that you just told them yeah love that like what well, one uh, term that's been floating around uh recently is dollars per word or uh words per dollar and you want that uh ratio to be as big as possible so the least amount of words you use to get like thousand dollars and I think that's what you were saying as well. Pick one thing that that audience, uh, that that uh, persona cares about the most. Just talk about that. Keep it under one or three minutes. I think that you mentioned that if it's more longer than three minutes, like people aren't going to watch it. So try to keep it around one minute, and then you're gold, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, and I mean, you're I guess you're good because you have ten years of, of sales background you are a professional at copywriting right so i guess that you're already very good at like cutting down the edge and keeping the keeping the the real the real content in there well uh i try but it's super difficult like i can blabber on and on like even today when i'm i'm uh so how i use uh videos in my messages for instance is going over a proposal uh or you know when i'm enabling my champion like is this what we talked about is this also what you uh what you wanted to uh, show internally. And uh, the tool I'm using, I can always see that I want to keep it within like five minutes. And I see I've been talking about uh, for uh, about it for 10 minutes. So I have to re uh, like stop, uh, recap what I'm, uh, I actually want to show, like cut out every, cut out the fluff and then re-record. And then for the second try, I'm usually between three and five minutes, which is more digestible. But if you see like someone sending you a 10 minute video, like you might as well prepare lunch and eat it uh, yeah, during man. that time. I mean, we're not all YouTubers. We're not all podcasters, to be honest. If someone sends me a four-minute video and they're not like someone famous, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not going to watch it. But, Lost. And by the way, I'm. I mean, I'm just going to say I'm a big fan of your content. I, I watch your videos usually, and I, I remember there was a video about about product demos, like uh, building a product right. demo that sells. Well back. And, and yeah. they were, yeah, like you, you mentioned a few types of product demos. And I, I just think like that could totally apply to what you're showing. Could, could we maybe for the viewers, like remind, remind everybody what were these three type of demos? 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. And thanks for bringing that up. Uh, yes, uh, when we're talking about video messages, that video message could be don't pitch, but, you know, uh, inspire people to want to have to talk to you. And that's actually like the first type of demo. The three types of demos uh, are inspirational, then an impact demo, and then enablement. And I'll uh, I just recap quickly of what they are and why they matter. The problem that we want to solve by uh, separating these three types of demos is being generic. Like if you are trying to create a message that's the same for everyone, it's not going to work. Just like with the uh, email customization that you mentioned in the beginning, Justin, that um, you have to uh, customize that video message, the, the message, that messaging that you use to the persona. Same goes for demos. Not pe People won't care about the same things. So you have to, uh, and depending on the life cycle that they're in, they're going to be uh, uh, interested in different things. So uh, for the interest demo, we typically use it uh, when we're outbounding and not getting a response to our our first emails, our follow-up emails, and and we don't even have their phone number, so we can't cold call them, for instance. In that case, sending an like as long as we know that our emails are being delivered or or we know that they're active on social media there where we can send a video, I would love sending a one to two minute inspirational demo on what they stand to gain if uh, if they get on a call with us, and this should uh, this should be uh, focused around the pains of the status quo. What is the cost of inaction of not, uh, or what is the cost of inaction? So, what if they stay with the status quo, and what is the price at the end of the tunnel if uh, if they just agree to a call? So that's that's what I call the inspirational demo. Uh, and you can, I typically use these during follow-ups because creating videos takes a ton of time, uh, but I bet you'll contradict me later on. Anyway, second type is, <laughs> second, spoiler alert, uh, second type is validational demo or impact demo here. Like typ typically we do this after we've done discovery. Um, you can, like, you can do this during discovery. So just embed part, like uh, embed parts, uh, of, uh, your demo uh, in discovery to validate if you understood the buyer, uh, correctly. And if they say yes, uh, you're building rapport in the process, but let's say you're after discovery, you're sending a follow-up, uh, message. And in that you're embedding a short one to two minute, uh, impact demo showing Hey, so uh, this was the pain that you mentioned. This is the impact that you want. And this is the critical event that's driving the whole project. Uh, is this something that you believe uh, will get you to that impact? And if they say no, they'll clarify. So while you're demoing the impact that you believe will help them, they're actually get, you're actually getting more information from your buyers that will enable you to sell better. So that's the second type of impact demo. The but third demo is think, can, can I ask you a question? I'm sorry yeah, to cut course. you off, man. No, no, it's, no. Uh, it's, uh, so would you recommend the same person that does the discovery call to, because usually discovery calls tend to be sent after this to an AE sometimes. So you're an SDR and you're sending it to an AE. It depends on the workflow that you have within your company. But would you recommend... Who would you recommend to send a video? Basically, do you, do you need do you recommend to keep the same interlocutor, or is it okay to change uh, along the process? Well, uh, so there's no cookie cutter solution to that. Uh, if I had to uh, generalize, I would say it depends on how technical the product is. The more technical the product is, you will probably need a sales and need to partner with a sales engineer to uh, to do these impact demos again you don't need to it's not feature slapping it's not going in depth uh well AEs typically could do this because you're not getting into any technicals uh and any AE who's worth their money should know the impact that their product drives so technically an AE could also do it maybe partnering with a uh, an SC but for an imp uh for a short video message if i'm just validating i think an AEs could do it most of the time but when we're doing a, a, an impact demo, a separate demo session, let's say a 30 minute call, half of which is the demo itself, I would absolutely want that to be run by an SE if it's a technical product. That's super relevant. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, it makes it makes me think of like, uh, I mean, maybe in the discovery call directly, you could be already asking questions, setting the ground yeah. for that video, basically. So you have like, you mm -hmm. know, you have your your four or five possibilities of fe like feature you want to advertise, and you're 
every time you do your discovery call, you could be asking a question that basically leads to this. You know, it's like a chess player who would be doing a move, knowing that the next move will be this. You know, I, I like it. It's cool. Yeah. It's a good way. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I've so got you always, off. No, no, no. Uh, that was absolutely relevant. Love that you added. Uh, and then there comes a third type of demo, and this is typically how most sales reps treat their demos: the enablement demo, just you know, walk through of the platform, high level overviews. People won't care. They care about how this benefits them. So that's why we have a separate impact demo. Like we're just talking about the impact. When it's inspirational, we're talking about inspirational. When it's enablement, you typically do this before and during POCs, or it could be a trial. Like it could be a trial, which I want to automate. I'll record uh, small video messages on how one part of the platform works. Imagine like it's a guided walkthrough of the platform, just you know, cut into 20 little pieces that you have to record once and then then you're uh, good. So, and that's actually like what we would call a micro demo. But yes, yeah, but just saying, you tell me, am I the only one using micro demos or, or uh, is this really uh, a large, a much larger thing? And, uh, and can you like give us, give your two cents on, on, uh, how micro demos should be used. What are micro demos? What should they be used for? Yeah, yeah, great question. They're, they're like micro demos, definitely a thing, and it's a, it's a, it's more and more of a thing as we speak, because uh, nobody is reading emails anymore. It's impossible, literally, to send a long email. And how can you explain? I mean, let's imagine someone that has a, a complex product, We're, especially in SaaS. I mean, you're you're rarely selling something that is straightforward. You know, you're not selling a stick to like poke something. You're selling some kind of thing that will push another, like pull a rope, uh, turn a spin something, and then it's going to do what you want to do. And how are you supposed to explain this process yeah. if you're not having like uh, a video or something? So that's why uh, for me, it's all about show, don't tell. Like I, mm. I've, been, I've been doing theater for almost all my life it's all about show don't tell like uh uh it, it's important it's so much more impactful to just you know jump on a call you you, you have a data visualization tool I, I like examples you know like data visualization uh -huh. tool you could be describing how slick uh, your dashboards are they're blue they're nice they're going up and down and, and like how i'm going to differentiate from my competitors if i know my winning edge Love is it. my dashboards but in the video yeah. it's instant i see it I, I can see how much better it looks than whatever i have right now i'm using my old dashboarding tool that is like painful to create and hard to share and my 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 team is not looking at them because they're ugly and that's it i have a nice and slick new tool that i want to use you know yeah and and you're touching on a very important topic when it comes to demos uh uh, you don't want to say that your platform is awesome. You want to show what it can do in a way that it makes the buyer say that this is awesome. Uh, and that that's such a more much more impactful way of, of doing demos. Uh, so love it. Show, don't tell. Um, exactly. Is that the only yeah. thing that... Um, uh, no, so so and, I mean, and yes, so, so we're using micro demos for, for show, don't tell. And there, you mentioned already that it's, it's very short, right? Um, how how would you use these in in practice well i mean we've developed a tool that does this honestly so but old school what i would do is that i would have i would do tiering first so it's important when you take your user base your your user base or your depending on what you want to achieve your your list of prospects and everything it's important to have a deep understanding of what they have and and what pain they're experiencing so what we've done for example and works really well is you take your tool and you think what do i fix what is it what are the problems that i'm helping with so we have an ai solution that helps creating ai videos so we fix things for people that are generating videos that are that people that have a visual product people that have a complex product that they have struggling to explain so we have defined five different pains that our product fixes and then we think okay which company goes in which pain so we create buckets 
and we have five different buckets and we know that for ex and and then i know that a data visualization tool will go in this pane i know that a uh, uh, someone that is doing like crypto regulation that has a super complex product will go in that mm -hmm. type of pane according to this i have a specific demo for these guys addressing this specific pain and showing them the exact feature that I want to show. But right. what we've done now is that thanks to, to personalization, you can take one video and transform it into an evergreen video that would work with everybody. So by adding, for example, pain as a dynamic variable, you can generate this whole section when you say, hey, Victor, as head of sales at company name, I know that you're experiencing pain one or pain two or pain three and pain four. And so according to which pain they're uh, experiencing, you could then match because we also created a background editor, powerful background editor that allows you to, to do demos, show websites, uh, uh, do all kind of stuff. So you can show exactly what you want to show to that person. So Wait, you come in. Ju yeah. just, just what I'm on just so I'm understanding correctly. So let, let me tell you how I, how I use this uh, for context, how I use micro demos for context. So typically uh, when I was facilitating like 3K deals, as you mentioned in the beginning, not worth your time when you have a million dollar quota, you're never going to hit if you're doing everything one by one. So what I did is mm -hmm. I recorded parts of the platform, like uh, how you do this, how you do that, um, and st sent these over. But in order to uh, like, what I could have done better is is personalized for every content, like uh, hi Adam, hi Jane, hi Justin. I would have to like record these separately and then stitch two videos together. Uh, I wouldn't didn't even mess with the middle of the the uh, message that I recorded, but these were evergreen. I could at least you know send them out over as a guide. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't have to re-record the same things over and over again. It's like why we automate email. Are you saying that your tool can do the same thing, but for video? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can have, if if all you want to do is personalize the first name, I mean, first name personalization is cool. Like we allow it. And, and I think that a video that starts with hello first name and then goes on to, uh, to uh, 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 an explanation is really nice. Uh, but what I, where I think the same way when you start showing stuff in the background, you gain value. I think that where the real value is, is when you can turn your video from being four minutes because you want to cover as much as possible, taking it down to one minute because you're hyper-focused all of a sudden. You can just talk only about the thing you think are relevant for that person. And it also opens up a whole world of A-B testing videos, which up to now was totally impossible. You couldn't, uh, because you never s deliver the message quite the same. And having video A and video B not personalized tend to have like, tend to, to, to have flaws in the results because people don't watch non-personalized videos. But when you send a personalized yeah. video and you, you, you talk to someone and you say, you're head of sales, you're experiencing pain A or pain B in video B, and then you see how much completion you have, what is the conversion rate of these videos, and then you can get some super relevant data around what my user base is facing. What are the real issues that we have? And that's why we have some users actually that are that are product owners, POs, product managers, because they conduct product research and usually they want to see yeah, I, I mean, that's the beauty of having an AI tool. You know, people come up with all kind of stuff that you never thought of. So uh, they, they, they send uh, like kind of survey videos where they say, hey, thank you for being user of uh, our tool. You have uh, an account since account date creation. And as a premium member of our stuff, you have feature A and feature B. Uh, what do you think of feature C? Would you, would you mind jumping in a call with me or just watching this micro demo? And this is super, super relevant. Like this is the kind of thing that once again, Tool per like video personalization and what we're doing and, and especially background personalization can be a huge game changer. Wait, so just thinking ahead, uh, since you mentioned that it you can uh, add variables throughout the text, so does that mean let's say if uh, if 
you record one con one just generic uh, framework video framework for uh, let's say uh, validating if a, if a feature meets an impact you can have the feature as a variable and the impact as, as a variable and that ju then just hyper personalize you don't have to re-record the video but you actually personalize that as well it's exactly like what how it works in an email. Uh, I think we all you we all know tools like Clay now. They're pretty big on on LinkedIn. Yeah. I love what they're doing. It's awesome. Uh, Human Liker is also one of the tools that I really like. Uh, shout out to Thibaut who is doing an, an amazing job. Um, but these tools allow to create basically this in an email, and you could couple the data that they give you about a company to create ultra personalized like pains experienced or or uh, or solutions that you want to give and with this yes you can do exactly what you're doing in an email campaign using ai to personalize your video uh, your email but in a video basically that's definitely better what i've been using so uh, to to uh, add like a touch of personalization to a, a, an evergreen uh, evergreen enablement demo or impact demo uh, what I did was just send a, a cover message, like, you know, just one or two lines saying, uh, hi, first name. Uh, I recorded this for you because I saw you're doing this uh, and I think we can get you impact this. Interested? You know, just one or two lines, add the video because you need to give them a, a like even even when you're hyper-personalizing video, you, you'll still need to probably write this cover message. Um, oh, yes. Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, there's no incentive to click. Like they don't know you. Or, well, later on they'll know you, but for let's say an interest demo, uh, or yeah, uh, an interest demo, you're not going to be known. They're not going to click the video unless you give them uh, an incentive. Context. But yeah. so that's what I did. But that's all the personalization there was to it. Instead, I focus on, you know, creating a very niche uh, topic or impact that I or or area which I was going to show. But uh, with your solution, it sounds like. I can just create a framework and use that to multiple personas, multiple pain points, multiple yeah. features. I'm actually glad that you bring it up because it's super important to have a good message uh, to 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 introduce your video. People tend to to not look too much into it because they have a personalized video, but if they don't click on it, nobody's gonna watch it, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so at the end of the day, you end up at the point, point zero. So having a good copyright, and the call to action to your copywriting is not uh, book a meeting with me or let's have a conversation or anything. It's watch my video. And then the call to action of your video is whatever you want. But it's yeah, yeah, first yeah. watch my video. <laughs> and so it's these, uh, how do, we we're talking about micro demos. I like also the micro steps that you're putting. You know, every time your your prospect says yes to something you're, you're, you're suggesting, is micro one engagement. step closer yeah micro engagement that's the word i was looking for so it's like do you want to watch my video yes i want to watch it do you want to complete it of course hey at the end of the video i'll tell you do you want to download my content because you can and we also allow to to add content to your to your page so under your your video the, the title is hello first name for example and then you can give them a link to your website or to your calendar or whatever so yeah micro engagements and that makes me think of something like the most important thing in your video is to keep momentum. And mm. and we're not all Scorsese. We're not all like YouTubers like you. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm curious, what is your take on how to keep momentum, how to keep engagement all through your video from beginning to start and, and ensure that people complete it? Mm. Uh, love that you asked that. Uh, so. I have a, a demo structure that's been working for me uh, at multiple my multiple past companies, um, but in general, you want to start with the end in mind. So, what is what is the impact I'm getting by the end of this session? What is the challenge uh, keeping you from getting that impact on your own without our solution? And then show the demo. And, but that demo has a structure as well. And uh, what's been working? So, there's a lot of demo structures flying around, and some are easier to remember than others. <laughs> no matter how good they are. Uh, I have a, a simple four step one. It's setting the stage because imagine like you're showing a screen for the first time. Imagine the first time you were shown a bike. You didn't know what it was, what it was used for. You couldn't be expected to know what a bike is used for. You need to set the stage. What am I seeing here and why should I care? Macro them, what, what will we do here? 
So, uh, what we will do here and why should I keep listening? Uh, and then the micro, which is where most sales reps spend their time, like clicking through a feature by feature. That's what you would just want to skip through, not even talk, just click, 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 done. So set the stage macro. Uh, what am I seeing here? What will we do and why should I care? Show it in action very briefly and then go in for the close. Is this something that insert here? Is this something that gets you this impact? Is this something that you see yourself using that day to day? Is this something that solves this pain that you're facing currently? Whatever it is, set the stage, macro, micro, close. That's the structure I use and it's pretty universal. I've been using it uh, for the past three companies I've worked at. Cool. Thanks, um, that's it basically. But uh, I think we've been dabbering on for like 30 or more minutes now. Uh, if we wanted to, uh, Justin, if we wanted to sum up uh, what we talked about in today's session, what there's a lot of takeaways, of course, but what is the two or three things that our audience who are still on, on the line should definitely take away from this conversation? Mm -hmm. um, well, first, um, keep it short and sharp keep your videos short and sharp and keep the momentum like what you just said, Vic. Um, it's important to stay relevant all through your video from second one till the last second. And yeah, keep it as short as possible. You don't want to, people won't watch a video of five, 10 minutes, 40 minutes. <laughs> um, the second point, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen those, <laughs> believe me, it's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Um, don't, second one is don't tell, show that's, that's when you get your whole, your whole point. And, and sometimes I see people taking a video a bit like a text, so they'll either deliver their pitch in a way that is not engaging and, and voice. I mean, you're adding, as I said, a third dimension to your whole, to your whole, uh, message. So be engaged, um, actually like believe what you're saying we can hear it and share your screen mm -hmm. don't send full face videos you're missing on you have like if you're not sharing your screen you're missing 80 percent of your of your screen on 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 on, on the useless content i'm not saying that i mean it's cool yeah. to see your face and everything but usually i don't know you i don't yeah. i i don't care about you of <laughs> what i want to know is why are your tool is relevant and how is it going to change my life? You know? <laughs> yeah. I, lo I love those four points. So keep it short, show, don't tell, bring your energy and show something. Don't just, you know, appear on screen. Yeah. Um, and also like, if I can yeah, add a lesson about it. like videos, yeah. maybe in general, uh, the best videos, the best video out there that you can create is a video that evolves. Uh, there's learnings with every video. So you see, a completion rate, people not finishing it. It th these are messages. These are learnings. Don't stick to one. Just like keep updating it. Just like an email campaign. Keep updating it. Keep keep yeah, revamping yeah, yeah. it. There's no such thing as a, a like a perfect thing on the first spot and on the first round. So yeah, keep keep iterating. Love that. And I think that's a, a great way, great place to end today's session. Uh, appreciate you being here, Jasim. Uh, for the people who want to find more, uh, find out more about what you do and about Ubiqui, um, where can they find you? Where should they reach out to you? Yeah, um, add me on LinkedIn. I I answer all my LinkedIn messages, so don't hesitate to reach out. I try to post uh, things about deliverability and uh, and emailing and, and outreach in general uh, because I I like the community on LinkedIn. I like the like what is possible to share and create. So yeah, don't hesitate to follow me. Uh, I also have a blog. I'm I'm the one writing the blog in Ubiqui, so I'm I'm. This is more about video prospecting and and AI. And uh, there is a huge. Yeah. Everybody's talking about AI now. I mean, probably you may you may have heard about ChatGPT. I think yeah, uh, um, it's a thing. Ch ChatGPT yeah. what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so yeah, like it, it's all about using it right. Like don't overdo it. Uh, there there's a good way to use it. So yeah, uh, LinkedIn, email me if you find my email. We all have lead generation software. Don't hesitate to email me. If you don't lend it spam, I'll answer you. 
Yeah, I'll leave a links links to these materials in the description below. Thanks for uh, being here, and yeah, have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too, man. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. See you around. If you enjoyed this video and are hungry for more, you'll love this next one right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe first, and then see you there.